Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm doing a tag created by Rachel Stephanie here on YouTube. This is the Evaluating My Eyeshadow Palette Collection tag. As someone who has a large eyeshadow collection, this of course called to me. I originally saw this on Bougie Bree's YouTube channel. I'll have her video linked down below along with the original by Rachel in my description box, of course. But I saw Bougie Brie do this and then I saw the uh, original tag from Rachel and I was like, I have to do this tag. Just like, duh, I need to. So there are eight questions in this tag. Before we jump in, I'll just go ahead and throw up my full playlist. I do quite a lot of makeup tags. Uh, before I switched to my new schedule, I tried to do like a tag Tuesday every Tuesday when I was doing five videos a week. Now that I'm down to three videos a week, I didn't want to do one every week, but... I still love tags. I think they're fun, you know? So I'll have the whole playlist linked up in the cards if you would like to binge watch all the tags I've done. So let's go ahead and jump into the actual questions. Question number one is, what was your first eyeshadow palette? I actually did a whole video on this. So my first eyeshadow palette was from Too Faced. The very first time I ever bought makeup by myself, I went into a Sephora. I actually had a pretty bad experience. It's detailed in that video, but the first eyeshadow palettes I picked up were both from Too Faced, and the very first one was the Boudoir Eyes palette, and I, that has a special place in my heart. I actually still have that original palette. I no longer use it because it was almost five years ago that I got it. I keep it mainly for sentimental and for display reasons, so I still have that like up on my vantage, like on, on my uh, like display case that I have over here but I don't use it anymore. So I still have it, it's got a special place in my heart, but that was my very first eyeshadow palette. If you wanna hear the whole story behind that and my very first Sephora visit, go check out that video that I have up in the cards. Question number two is what palette do you use the most? And at this point in time, it has to be my Pan That palette, which is ABH Subculture. I'm using this palette every day, every day. So of course, it's the palette that I'm using the most. Question number three is, if you had to get rid of an eyeshadow palette right now, right now, which palette would you choose and why? So I went through my collection and I found one. This has lasted through so many declutters, even though I still haven't reached for it. And honestly, I wouldn't feel bad about getting rid of it. This is a MAC palette. This is the MAC Semi Sweet Times 9. I've decluttered other MAC palettes. I think I've had the one of the the girls palettes i think i had the basic bitch palette i decluttered that one and i i think this is my last mac palette and i kept it by virtue of it being a mac palette and because everyone else on youtube like the old school youtube was like oh mac is the best mac shadows are amazing honestly they're not and it took me this long to realize it but i needed to kind of i guess experience that and figure that out for myself so I wouldn't feel bad about getting with this palette. It is a hella neutral palette, except for like this one row. I kept it for this one row right here. I got a gold, I got a burgundy, and I have a black. Do I have this elsewhere? Yes, of course I do. So do I need this? No. But I kept it because I think this is the only other MAC shadow th thing that I own. Am I going to get rid of it right now? No, but if I had to immediately pick a palette to get rid of, it would be this one. Question number four is, do you have a deep emotional connection with any of your palettes? So, I, I think I mentioned my very first palette. I do have a connection with that. Of course, I've kept it and I keep it on display here in my room. So that's number one. The other one that I think I have a deep emotional connection with is this crime scene palette from Make Up a Murder because... I just, I love this palette. <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know, I've talked about this in previous videos, but when I went to college, every everything up until I went to college, I was on a CJ track, criminal justice track. I was into forensics. I come from a family of police officers and detectives, and I was going to school in DC and planning to go to grad school and work in crime scene investigation. Unfortunately, the year I got into my college, they got rid of the program track that I wanted to do because that program track included a bachelor's and a master's in six years. They got rid of it the year I got in. 
So I kind of just was floundering for a bit. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I ended up just going for a bachelor's in CJ. And due to financial aid and the amount of student loans I had to take out, my school actually messed up and I wasn't eligible for financial aid for my last year there. So I ended up having to leave before I actually finished school. So I'm like three credits away from a bachelor's in CJ. Thankfully, at this point, I've been able to work my way up to a, a good position in a good company that didn't require that degree. And my job and my colleagues are actually helping me with professional development and I'm working my way up like through there. It's, it's totally different, but also not really because I like books and I'm in publishing. So, I mean, it's, it's different, but not out of character, if that makes sense. But this just brought me back to everything that I was working for, everything that I was passionate about. Because it's awesome to see like your two passions collide. This is makeup and it's crime scenes. This, the same way I did in one of my previous videos where I combined books and makeup and I made my own palettes for certain like book series that I loved, that. And so this has a special place in my heart. I will never get rid of this, odds are, because of how much it means to me. Question number five is, which palette was the biggest waste of money? I gotta be honest, I think it was my most expensive purchase, my big Natasha Denona palette. I rarely use this. I like the fact that I picked a color scheme that I'm more likely to actually use, which is the green-brown color scheme. But was this worth the money that I paid for it? No. <laughs> no, it was not. <laughs> Honestly, if I was smart, I, I should have returned this, but I didn't. I kind of, I guess I wanted to learn my lesson and have a reminder of this. Should I ever want to do this again? Because I never should. This is way too expensive. So while I still like the shades and I like the formula, I just like them. I can get something that is as good, if not better, for 10% of this price. Oh my god, are you literally going to start mowing your lawn and doing shit right now? I guess it's 8 a.m. now, so. But goddamn. Oh my god, so they stopped mowing for literally like two seconds. I'm going to try to finish this video really quickly before they start again. Yay, fun. <laughs> Question number six is, which palette was the biggest surprise to you, i.e. that you ended up loving more than you thought or not liking as much as you expected? I went the liking more than I thought I would route and I had to pick this palette from Milani. This is a bold obsessions palette. This is so good. I honestly wasn't, I gotta say, I wasn't expecting much from Milani and Milani shadows, but these are incredible. They're smooth, they're pigmented, they're creamy. I love this palette. That being said, I haven't tried out the rest of their palettes yet, but this is it knocks it out of the park it's affordable you can use coupons i love this palette and i love the way it's arranged you have your different like color stories in like different rows so that you can kind of do a single look or you can mix and match what you want this is such a good palette and i wasn't expecting this at all damn it damn it <laughs> he started mowing again Question number seven is, do you have a palette you never reach for? Which one and why? I did a whole video on this. Go watch that video because this one is obviously trash now. But the one palette I would have to mention is from Colourpop. This is the all I see is magic. I'm so upset. There's a plane and there's mowing. I think this is hubris. I think because I wasn't expecting to work from home today, and I'm working from home today, so I was like, let's get as many videos filmed as we can, right? So I already filmed two, and those went well. This is my third. And I think the universe was just like, ha 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 ha, you can't film three videos in one day. Who are you? So anyway, the ColourPop All I See is Magic palette. This is a very holiday-themed palette. I talk about it a lot more in that other video that I did and the other video that I did, uh, but it's a really pretty palette, really nice shades, I never touch it. The next and final question is, do you have any palettes where you love all of the shades? So I have to say, this could have gone for like the surprise section too, but 
the Too Faced Peach Perfect or Sweet Peach Palette. I don't know why I keep saying Peach Perfect, but this palette surprised the hell out of me. And it's awesome. I love everything about this palette. You've got a really great mixture of uh, mattes to shimmers. All the shades just work out really well. And I hate this lawnmower work guy. All the shades work out really well. They're beautiful. My favorite shade is this luscious shade that I've already hit pan on. And I'm afraid of using it because I've already hit so much pan in this palette. And I don't want to use up that shade. This palette is great. It also smells great, which is weird, but I kind of like it. I'm kind of into it. This is the best thing Too Faced has ever done, and it's honestly been all downhill from here for Too Faced. Okay, so that's the tag. I'm gonna end this because I'm sick of this lawnmower guy. He's been here for an hour. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and just finish this right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was a bit of a hot mess at the end, but um, that, just, just, thank you. Thank you for dealing with it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video without this lawnmower. Bye. I kind of hate myself, but literally, I filmed that video, right? And the minute I turned off. We are made to suffer. I was gonna say, the minute I turned my camera off, he stopped, because the minute I turned my camera off, he did stop. And then five minutes later, he started again.